Today we begin a new series in our Old Testament survey. And today we're in the poetic books or the wisdom literature which starts with Job and Psalms and Proverbs and Ecclesiastes and Song of Solomon. But for the major portion of our limited time, and I, I could spend almost forever here because I love the Psalms, perhaps as great as any Old Testament book anyway. But for the greater portion of our thinking and our study will be in Psalms, but we want to, of course, do a review and a summary of the material in all the books. But today we're in Psalm 1. Of course, 73 of the Psalms was written by King David. Uh, 12 were written by Asa, uh, who was a prominent figure and the leader of worship in Israel. Two by Solomon, one by no Moses, and uh, others by unknown authors that we have. The Psalms are full of diversity and different material, perhaps the most important. Uh, content of the Psalms is that many of them are messianic and prophetic when it comes to the person in the ministry of the Lord Jesus. They're very helpful and beneficial and inspiring in, in that regard. Some Psalms are called precatory Psalms where vengeance is prayed for upon the enemies of Israel and the people of God. We have the, the penitential Psalms of penance and uh, Confession of sin, of course, David's 51st Psalm is the greatest and primary example of these. We have what's called the Pilgrim Psalms, and they're a group of them. We have the Hallelujah Psalms, and the Psalms about the history of Israel and about the remembering of the creation of the earth. We have uh, Psalms about the Word of God, uh, the 119th Psalm, which is the longest uh, chapter in the Bible. And this great psalm, of course, is a declaration and an instruction and a praise to the Word of God. Uh, we have the song, uh, the psalms of degree that uh, precede and follow after the 119. Some of these are some of my favorites too, and it was thought that perhaps as many of the other psalms were used in the worship practices in the yearly calendar of Israel, that maybe on the steps of the temple, some of the steps that these 15 psalms were repeated, one for each step. And of course, there are many ideas about when they were used. Uh, this is probably a more accurate one. But these little short psalms that are so full of grace and truth, uh, these psalms uh, are important to us. The Psalms are in five different books, and at the end of each book is a doxology. The first division, Psalm 1 through 41, and then 42 through 72, 73 through 89, Psalm 90 through 106, and then 107 through 150. But today we want to read this first Psalm, and before we do that, we want to go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Father, just as this part of the Word of God reveals the worship and the inner needs and the longings of the heart of your children, the praise and the thanksgiving, and the remembering of you and your great work and your person, how mighty and majestic and marvelous they are, and we love them for the benefit to our heart and the, the uh, leading and teaching of our thinking which brings us unto the How mighty and majest and wonderful, great and powerful and gracious you are. And so Lord, help us today to rejoice and to learn from not just Psalms but Job and Proverbs and Ecclesiastes and Psalm Solomon. Help us to learn from the study of this portion. These wisdom literatures of the Old Testament. 
Help us to learn from them today, we pray. And Lord, our life is all about knowing your will. And Lord, as we look at this first psalm, it is such a summary of life and God and eternity. May it be to our help and our instruction today, we pray. Amen. Do you want to be happy today? That's kind of a foolish question, isn't it? Uh, really, that's all anybody in the world, both saved and unsaved, really wants to be. And really, for the believer, we have something better than being happy, though happy is not a bad thing. But happiness is what changes with circumstance. I can be happy if I... Get a million dollar check in the mail, like yesterday. But I'm just kidding. Of course, we don't ever get a million dollar check in the mail. But if we did and it was real, we would probably be happy that day if everything else was going all right. Happiness depends on circumstance. And so our happiness goes up and down. Joy depends on the presence of Jesus. And so it is a constant and can be in the Christian's life. Even in the time of greatest sorrow, in the time of disappointment, in the times of personal failure in our life, joy can be present. And so today we want to look at this first psalm and read it and think about that you must be blessed and how can that be? And of course the word blessing means happy or rejoicing. You must be blessed. And so we read the psalm and think about the beginning of this first psalm and how that it contains in a capsule all of God's plan for man in eternity. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate both day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth its fruit in its season. Its leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. How can you be blessed today? Well, we can be blessed today by making the right choice. This first psalm, the first of all the 150, as we have hinted at, is, is like a summary. It's like a capsule. It's like a, a, a preview of a movie clip. It is a little clip of God's thinking and working. And in it we find two men and two ways and two destinies. And so today every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, at the age of accountability, as a choice. And our destiny depends upon our choice. And it, it, the choice is about what this life is all about, why God has put us here. The main purpose for our existence and the, and the main thing that will determine what our eternity is all about. Today you have a choice. And what have you done with your choice today? You have a choice to choose Jesus Christ and what He did for you on the cross as the payment for your sin, as the producing of your salvation, as the hope for your future, as the strength and purpose to live your life here and now, to take care of you, to guide you, and to supply your needs, and to be your joy, and to be your strength, and to be your hope. 
He that said, I go away and I'm preparing a place for you and I'm going to come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Men have this thing before them. And though they cannot help being born and they cannot change the fact that they are born in sin, they can choose Jesus and then after that they can choose to do His will. And know His grace and see His glory. And everything else in this psalm depends upon the choice. I tell you that everything in life is about Jesus. Everything in this book is about Jesus really and ultimately. God's plan and His work and His purposes. The creator and sustainer of this universe is Jesus. It's all about Him. And thus we have seen as we have studied the Word of God. And so I tell you today, and so I press upon you today, and I would have you to press upon your children and your friends and your acquaintances and those you know and those you meet that are lost in the way. I would have this message pressed upon the world and upon man. It is the message of a God that has His arms open that says, I love you and I have provided My Son for you and you may choose Him and His life. And my plans are you must suffer the result of your doing. It's Christ or hell. It's salvation or destruction. It's right or it's wrong. And it all it all, it all begins. It all involves the cross. It all involves the turning from us and what we want and what we can do and what we can achieve and what we can be to turning to what Jesus is and what He wants and what He has done and what He can accomplish and what He can be in us and through us. The choice. So today I say make the right choice. And I hope you have made it. And if you're a child of God, I hope you understand that, that the important thing, and, and I know that people want to go to heaven, but a lot of people think they're going that are. And a lot of people that are going aren't going to be happy with what they see they've done for the Lord when they get there and view their life and see it all burn up in the fire of judgment because they lived even their life after they got saved for their self. And, and the efforts of our self cannot ever please God. So today, I say make the right choice. It's about two men and it's about two ways of living. And so the second point in this first song, if we're to be blessed to the Lord, we certainly have to make the right choice. And if we make the right choice, that means we'll walk in the right way. And the psalmist here describes the life of the righteous man and the life of the ungodly man. And he said, happy is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scorn." There's some things a Christian does not do. And that's a lesson we need to learn in 2001. And if you hate rules and you despise the holy admonitions of the Word of God, there's something wrong in your Christian life. Because the psalmist said, because you are blessed and because you have made the right choices, there's some things you just don't do. And a righteous man doesn't walk in the counsel and the wisdom and the thinking and the processes and the living and the desires and the goals and the sin and the lust and the selfishness and the pride of the old man the way the rest of the world lives. He doesn't live like that. And if he tries to, God's going to take him to the woodshed. And he'll be sorry that he did. That's the way the ungodly live. They walk on in the counsel of men. They stand and, and, and the road that sinners live in and they travel that road and from their acts of selfishness and pride and wants, they disobey the holiness of God. And 
happy is the man that knows the Lord. He doesn't live like that. And he doesn't sit in the seat of the scornful, making judgments, pronouncing vengeance upon, reaping havoc, doing unto others before they can do unto you, getting back, settling scores, pouring out the hatred of sin and wrath upon all that are around them. But the godly man, he delights in the Word of God. He lives by the, the water of God's Holy Spirit's ministry, that living life that's in him. He bears fruit from the person of Jesus living in his life. He produces godliness, and he may struggle, and he may not have fruit on his tree this day, but give him time and God will work his will and his ministry in his life. And a Christian is characteristic by living rightly and not wrongly all the days of his life. And if there is no difference between us and an unsaved person, if our life is constantly dominated by sin, there is something terribly wrong in the way we're living our Christian life. And so I say, make the right choice and walk the right way. And then experience the right destiny. The godly man prospers, but the ungodly are not so. They're like the chaff, which the wind driveth away. The chaff is the utter the outer covering over the wheat or the corn in the day of the wind, in the day of the trial, the ungodly are blown away and destroyed and utterly come to nothing. And if you play with God, if you choose your way and not God's way, and somehow hope that it will all end up right, you're foolish indeed. It cannot. It will not. Because God says in His Word here that the ungodly shall not stand in the day of judgment, nor sinners be numbered with those that are saved. For the Lord knoweth and marks out beforehand and accomplishes in His saved the pattern of His living. And He has prepared a heaven for them and an eternity in a and a salvation complete without sin at the end of their life. But the ungodly shall perish. Rejecting God's mercy and grace. Rejecting His salvation. None of us deserve it, but God will give it. But if we will not take it, the end of man's existence is one of payment for his own sin. Suffering the consequences of his own choices of his own evil deeds. And to those that like partying and like to just think of good, pleasant thoughts and things, this psalm may not mean much to them. But to me it reveals the character of my holy, righteous God who controls everything, who determines everything, who is the authority of life. And though He is holy and righteous, He is loving and gracious and has provided salvation for all that we have. We have two men, two different classes. Those that will choose God's salvation and those that won't. Those that will walk in His ways and those that will. Those that will know the blessings of heaven for all eternity and those that will. And which are you today? And which are you pressing men to do today? By dispensing the knowledge of this word into any into the world in any way you can that the Holy Spirit leads you to. Today. This marvelous, wonderful, gracious, loving compassionate book of Psalms starts with this first Psalm, Psalm 1. And so we've looked at it today. 
Do you want to be happy? Do you want to be blessed? Do you want to have not only happiness but joy? Do you want to have fulfillment and see your life count and have an eternity with God? You can. And I trust you have. By His grace and mercy. Amen.